Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. So in my last video, I discussed about barbiturates, introduction, action, absorption and metabolism, and sign and symptoms. In this video, part 2 video, I am going to discuss about these three, that is treatment, post-mortem findings, and the medical legal aspects. If you haven't watched that video, do go and watch that video. Link for the video is given in the description box. Now let's get started with this one. Let's start with the treatment. So the management of barbiturate poisoning is supportive. We need to maintain the A, B, C, D, E. That is A is for airway, B is for breathing, C is for cardiovascular support, D is for decontamination and E is for elimination. So we need to maintain the A, B, C, D, E because it is vital for the patient's survival. Once the patient is stabilized, gut decontamination has to be done and elimination enhancement is done. So first, for airway support, we can give mechanical ventilation with oxygen that is O2. It is also known as artificial respiration. So that is given. For cardiovascular support, hypotension respondents can be given, which includes crystalloid bolus and vasopressors like dopamine or norepinephrine. But this kind of treatment is rarely required in the cases third is decontamination and elimination enhancement for this gastric lavage can be done which is done with the help of KMNO4 and also activated charcoal can be given so KMNO4 and activated charcoal is administered 2 to 4 hour apart as barbiturates re-enter the gastrointestinal tract through enterohepatic circulation bowel movement can be done by enema good oral hygiene is required temperature has to be maintained of the patient's body posture change should be done at regular intervals and antibiotic can be given and the treatment is also to be done according to the symptoms that the patient is developing next if we talk about the post-mortem findings then they, they can be of two types that is external findings and internal findings external include mainly those of asphyxia so the patient is going to show symptoms of asphyxia cyanosis is present froth can be seen coming out from the mouth and the nostril congested face can be seen and prominent post-mortem staining can be seen barbiturate bristles might also be seen on the skin if we talk about the internal symptoms then in stomach white particles can be seen gastric mucosa may be eroded fundus may be thickened granular and hemorrhagic if we talk about lungs then lungs are congested and edematous bronchopneumonia can be seen and petechial hemorrhages may or may not be present for heart, subendocranial hemorrhages may be seen. Kidney, degeneration of the convoluted tubules can be seen and other organs might be congested. So these were the external and internal post-mortem findings of barbiturate poisoning. If we talk about the medical legal aspects, then it is mostly suicidal because it is available in the form of pills and people can easily overdose it. So mostly it is suicidal and rarely it can be homicidal. Accidental poisoning might occur due to overdose also, which is known as automatism, which is also going to be discussed in the next video. Addiction due to excessive use of barbiturates can also be there. So the death can also be due to the addiction of barbiturates. It can also be due to certain occupational hazards. Barbiturate may impair the mental and or physical abilities required for the purpose for the performance of tasks such as driving a vehicle or operating a machinery. So patient working with them should be warned accordingly. So these were some of the medical legal aspects of barbiturates. This was all about this video. Thank you so much for watching it. If you liked it, then please hit the thumbs up. Also subscribe to my channel and hit the bell icon for regular video updates.